What's up everybody, it's your boy Mike Rasheed. I have a very, very special guest, a good friend of mine here, Monique Ricardo. I'm gonna tell you a little something about her. If she was all dressed up and, you know, just looking normal, you would never know her background. She can fuck you up. <laughs> Monique, why don't you tell them a little bit about what you do and your background and, you know, how you made transitions and, and stuff like that and why. Okay. Um, again, Monique Ricardo. I'm a Brazilian Jiu Jitsu black belt. Um, I started off in bikini, uh, IFBB Pro Bikini, competing, and um, my husband did, uh, he's a black belt as well, Eddie Ricardo, uh, in Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. So um, I, would, I was under him, training a lot, and um, competed a lot with him, and eventually just. Uh, started you know winning some small tournaments and then I got kind of like the bug and the itch to compete and from there on it's just like my goal is to uh, become black belt and start competing um, more and more and making a name. How, how long did it take you to, to reach black belt status? Um, about eight years. Okay. Total. Yeah, people don't know how long it takes. Right? Yeah um, it, it takes a while because uh, it, there's a lot that you learn. You learn a lot of mobility, technique, and um, it, it looks easy from the outside, but when you actually do it, it's, it's a little bit it, it, it more involved. It doesn't look easy. It doesn't look easy. <laughs> um, one thing that fascinates me about jujitsu uh, is something I'm not good at. I'll be the first to tell you guys. I've tried, I've, I've, you know, I used to go to like judo school. This was when I was in Dubai, and then I got into a little bit of jujitsu. I didn't stay at it long enough to get good, but I liked it because it was like similar to boxing, two completely different fighting systems, but it's like body mastery, you know? And boxing is one type of body mastery, but the jiu-jitsu is a whole completely different type. And I'm gonna tell you guys, I consider myself a fairly strong person, but when you're grappling, you're using muscles that you don't normally use, lifting weights or whatever else you're doing. So it will wear me out. Oh yeah, it's um, a lot of cardio. Um, what they say is like a human chest. So that's why it's so much fun. Um, yeah, but it's, it, Jiu Jitsu was designed uh, for a weaker person to you know, be a, a bigger person. To so. level the playing field. Yes, exactly. Mm -hmm. Right, yeah. I was lucky enough though to be able to, when I first learned, before I knew like any technique, I would be able to like muscle out of like submissions. So I had to give myself some credit <laughs> for that. But I exerted a lot of energy using strength, you know, and one thing that I do like about it with uh, combat sports or just combat in general is not about being the biggest, strongest. That has nothing to do with it, you know? So um, Jiu Jitsu is a perfect example of it. You know, um, even the history of it is fascinating, you know? So yeah, I guess we're gonna do a few drills and whatnot. And uh, y'all can see me get my ass kicked. You know, it's cool, it's cool. <laughs> Don't laugh too hard, you know? So I guess let's do it. Let's go. My name is Eddie Ricardo. I uh, have a gym here named Cobra Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. Check my team here out of Plano, Texas. All right, guys, one of the very basic uh, uh, self defense moves in Brazilian Jiu Jitsu is when somebody grabs you from behind. Okay, you don't know what's going on, somebody right here grabs from behind. Sometimes it can be a bigger person, sometimes a, small, uh, a smaller person. But you need to know what, what to do when somebody grabs you from behind. So you're right here. Okay, what you're gonna do, you're gonna try to turn your hip to the outside, step around, put the person into your hips, and take the person down. One more time, the person grabs you from behind, okay? You need to be kind of light on your feet. Step around, grab the person's legs, take the person down. Monique's gonna do a mic machine. <laughs> Number one, 
that we saw. Now we're gonna go for technique number two. Nine out of ten fights, the guy's gonna come with a big haymaker. Haymaker is what everybody watches in the videos, and the guy's just gonna come here, okay? It's a bad uh, a cross punch, okay? So the guy comes right here like he's throwing a baseball to try to punch. So the first thing I cannot do, I can never circle to his power hand, okay? The first thing I cannot do is circle to his power hand. So usually I'm always gonna try to circle to his weak hand, which is would be his jab hand. Okay, so right here what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna, I'm gonna be right here, okay, what I like to do, I'm saying, hey man, listen, I'm not trying to fight, and then come right here, you understand, why do you come right here, because anything the guy can do, you're gonna do your brushing, brushing the hair type of position, okay, in boxing, when you keep your hands up, you're, it's called a guard, okay, so you're like, hey man, listen, I don't want any trouble, and you're gonna hug the person right here, you're gonna pick the person up, and take them down, as gently as you want. Now Monique's gonna be doing on Mike Rashid. She's gonna be saying, no Mike, I don't want problems. You're too big, YouTube celebrity. And I don't want nothing to do with you. Oh, <laughs> you All right, Mike, I don't want to fight here. Uh -huh. Oh! <laughs> Desperate, the person it's kind of like a football player, or one of the things that you see the most is a takedown. Okay, they inside in the club or whatever. The guys come in and they just try to hug around your legs. So we are right here. The guys trying to just to do the same thing and just tackle you. Okay, one of the things that you gotta understand is that the person's head control where the person's body goes to. So when you're right here and you feel that the guy just coming towards you, look, you gotta control and you gotta pull the person down. Once the person is down, okay, that you control their head. You're gonna circle around, and at the same time as you're wrapping around the person's neck, you pull the person towards you, and you go for two. Monique's gonna show us the tie right now. Let's cross, circle around, pull it into her, show him out. down. So that was a, a nice demonstration. I appreciate you guys, you know, opening your, your gym doors to me. Um, that was amazing, that's all I can say. So fluid, you know, so, you know, that's intimidating. You know what I mean? <laughs> that's intimidating. Because a lot of fights end up people locking up. And when you have somebody that know what they're doing, it's so easy for them to tap snap or give you a nap. <laughs> um, I want to talk about um, what did jujitsu mean to you? Well, you see, a lot of people they think when they are going to a jujitsu or martial arts school that the main the main thing that they're gonna learn is about um, how to defend themselves or how to get in shape or how to do this and that. And the thing is, just like you say on all your videos, that I'm a big fan of Mike Rashid. I follow him. Instagram, Facebook, and it is about the mind. Once the person has the champion mind, and once the person believes in himself, he doesn't wanna be average, the person is driven, just like everything you see on your videos that are gold and people don't take it for granted. And I'm a world champion, and I understand, and I, I suck everything up you say, and I use it on my everyday life for inspiration. So for me, jujitsu is just a, a tool or a vessel to get better in life. Better human being, better father, better husband, better friend, better son, better better everything. So that's what jiu-jitsu is for me. How about with you, Monique? Um, for me, jiu-jitsu, um, 
gave me a lot of confidence. Um, I didn't have a lot of confidence growing up. I wasn't very athletic, and jujitsu it just gives you this. I don't know. This is this power that you. I don't. I'm not sure where it comes from, but it's just like this confidence to whether you know, like like you said, you, a lot of people use jujitsu for you know losing weight, self defense, and um, it, because it is so like strict and you want to get better you start to eat better so that way you um train better so then you start, you know you start to look better and uh, just all over you feel feel much better and just feel more confident about yourself right right um so you i mean you what you achieve as an ivb bikini pro mm -hmm. you know a lot of people can't get to that level and a lot of people are just like addicted to that stage life what pulled you away from that. What about jujitsu got you more interested in jujitsu? Because, you know, in my opinion, I've done bodybuilding and I've fought. You know, fighting is a lot harder. So why would, why did you take that harder route? Um, <clears throat> I think because of this, the same thing, like you said before, like um, the challenge, um, I, I love challenge. And because it was, it was much harder, it was something that, you know, it was like the unknown. Um, being able to test yourself and uh, and just grow in, in that aspect, um, the challenge itself is is what. So it's that progression. Yeah. 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 So what's next for you, Eddie? You you just won a big championship, right? Yes, sir. Tell us about that. Uh, we just came back, Sebastian, Monique, and I from uh, the World's Championship in uh, Los Angeles, uh, Long Beach, California. Long Beach. Yeah, and then we fought at the, the Pyramid, which is the California University, I believe, and it was one of the most prestigious tournaments in the world, no gi, and uh, I won first place, super heavyweight, Masters, and uh, it was a dream for me, it was a 19-year-old dream, something that I've been dreaming for a long time. It was very emotional for me, it was something that sometimes you can be the best, you can be training, you can do this and you can do that, and a lot of people never achieve uh, the first place. A lot of last year, I came back from a really bad injury, I, I almost became a handicap in 2013, and it was very emotional for me, I was really proud to get second place, and I went there with low expectations, training just Harder than ever, but now with really, really high expectations. Always believing myself, telling my goal. But thanks God, I was able to go there in the first place, and I had a dream come true. Right, right. Well, I say this. Um, I tend to find that fighters, especially people who is really pure, come from a pure place, are really good people. And you guys are like, since I met you guys, are like really good people, like family to me. I, I look at it, even though we don't know each other a whole lot. So, you know, I wish you guys nothing but success, nothing but blessings. I know it's coming, and uh, yeah, just keep up the good work. And, um, you know, next time I'm out here, you know, I want to come in and get down with y'all, you know? <laughs> of course. And this, this, you know, I stopped, you know, I did jujitsu for about two or three years, and I stopped in 2012, but now I want to get back into it. You know what I mean? And doors are always open for yeah, you, Mike. That's what's up, that's what's up. <laughs> All right, y'all, I hope y'all enjoyed that and learned something. This is not just about being tough and, you know, because people that really are legit um, fighters, they're not trying to start fights. They're trying to avoid fights and stop fights. You know what I mean? So I hope you guys don't take this or learn a fighting system and, you know, want to be tough and bully people. That's not cool at all. And uh, so uh, take the, the deeper message from this, all right? Worse, worse than be, than 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 uh, uh, then being a bully is to become a bully. Exactly. So. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> All right. So we out. Much love.